Today we are celebrating our 100th episode, and I am so excited that it lands on April Fool's Day, my favorite holiday. Today is all about humor therapy and my amazing gift to you of fantastic ideas and what humor can do to unify families and bring that necessary joy, not just for today, but for generations to come. I'm insanely excited to share this today. I've literally been preparing for months. Don't miss it, and let's jump right in. Hey parents, welcome to Fulfillment Therapy. Do you want to raise your kids better and have a stronger marriage? Are you up late at night researching marriage and parenting tools and self-care tips? Do you start each day hoping for deeper connections and less chaos, but it ends with family arguments and going 12 different directions again? My name's Kendra, wife, mom, therapist, and growth enthusiast. It wasn't until I discovered how to fulfill my unmet needs that I was finally able to show up as my best self, as a spouse and parent. I realized that by meeting my needs, I could more fully meet the needs of my family with more energy and less resentment. In this podcast, I teach parents skills like boundary setting, prioritizing personal needs, communication, and claiming ownership. Just like my clients, you'll be shocked by the improvement in your marriage, parenting, and personal life when you focus on fulfilling your important, unmet needs. Ready to prioritize yourself so you can quit mentally throat-punching people? Then grab those earbuds and head outside, and let's rock and talk. Welcome back to today's episode. Like I mentioned, this is our celebration of our 100th episode. Can you believe we've already done 100 episodes? I have loved it. I absolutely love podcasting. I love having guests on. I love researching. I love learning. And I especially love this topic today. Humor therapy. My friends, I have literally been preparing for this for months. I really, really have. And (laughs) I honestly do anyway, because I am thinking about pranks all year long. And my kids are always asking me, what are you going to do for this year? What are you going to do for April Fool's? And they're always talking to their friends about it. And at one point, I thought maybe I should stop doing this like this kind of sometimes they get mad at me. Well, (laughs) I have learned year after year that it's actually the thing they look forward to most. And at times when they were younger, they didn't appreciate it much. But mostly I'm able to read them and understand what will work and what won't work. But not always, which I'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, I wanted to share some of these amazing ideas with you today, as well as why this is important. My hope is that this will inspire you to create your own humor traditions with your family that your family members will tell for years to come. But before I go into that, I have some exciting giveaways. So listen up. Because it is our 100th episode that I've been talking about, we are doing a 100-day episode coupon or giveaway, and that is you get $100 off of coaching. So that is with a bundle that is individual, that is nearly 80 to 85% off, and that is just for 48 hours. And this is simply as a thank you for all of the support you've given, for everything you've done to help promote this show, for showing up and listening and continuing to listen and sharing it with your friends. We are so grateful for everything that you've done, and we have grown so much in just 100 episodes. So thank you. And there's two other things. Number one, you have to, my friends, I have to emphasize this. You have to check out social media, either on Instagram or on Facebook. We have both a Facebook page and a Facebook group, and then Instagram. Even if you don't get on much, today is the day. I promise you. Like I said, I have spent months doing this 
cataloging all of my pranks, and I've had to do it throughout the month of March and even before because I knew this would take a long time. And my kids suspect things on April 1st now, so I have to do them ahead of time. But I have a catalog for you so far, as of right now. (laughs) I have 55 pranks that I have documented and taken pictures of, and I'm going to share one of those every 20 to 30 minutes. I haven't decided yet because I want you to have enough of them throughout the day to get ideas to do to your family members. (laughs) So I started releasing them at midnight last night, and like I said, it's every... 20 minutes, I believe, maybe every 30 minutes, I'll release another one. So it'll be all through April Fool's Day. And you are going to have so many amazing ideas, I promise you. I laugh so much just looking at all of those things now. And my kids always want to see the things that I've done, even though they might not have liked it in the moment for some of those, mostly they just love sharing it with their friends. So use that for some inspiration of your own. Again, that's in the episode show notes. So when you pull up this episode and you just scroll down, you will have those little links and just click on those links and you will see all of those amazing things. And if you would, share those or like them or comment or share your own. I really want this to be a fun celebration of our 100th episode and of April Fool's, my favorite unifying holiday, or depending on how you treat it, your most terrifying and disconnected holiday. So I'm going to jump in on how to treat it the right way and why it's important. But first, let me give you a very brief history of April Fool's. I thought it would be more fascinating, but this is all that I discovered. So they think that it originated in ancient Rome or even medieval Europe. And one theory is that it came when we adopted the Gregorian calendar in the 16th century. And when New Year's Day was moved from April 1st to January 1st, Those that continued to celebrate New Year's Day on April 1st became the subject of jokes and hoaxes, and that gave rise to the tradition, at least we think. We're not really sure. So that's a brief little history on it. But now let's talk about the benefits of humor. Another term for humor therapy is therapeutic humor. This is literally a medicine for us. It harnesses the healing power of laughter, and laughter can have an amazing amount of benefits for us, both physically and mentally. So it reduces stress hormones, it boosts the immune system, it improves cardiovascular health, and it enhances mood. Some of these things I've talked about before in another humor therapy episode I did quite a while ago, and I'll have a link for that in the notes as well. I think that was episode 45. Victor Borge said, laughter is the shortest distance between two people. Don't you love that? It really is. It really connects people on this amazing level. It has the ability to unite people and strengthen relationships. And this makes it a valuable tool for families that are seeking to cultivate that joy and that connection in their homes. So how do we do this in our home? Maybe we think we're a little too serious. Maybe we don't really let our hair down. Well, there are simple ways to infuse humor and laughter into your family life. One thing that you can do is you can create a humor board or a jar and fill it with funny quotes or jokes or any little things that your family members think are hilarious and enjoy that together. I actually did that in college, and all of my roommates would write funny quotes that people said or just funny things that people did that they wanted to remember, and we loved it. I think a lot of other people thought it was not that funny, but we thought it was hilarious. So (laughs) try something like that out. I actually really love that idea. I haven't done that with my own kids. Another thing you can do that I've mentioned in other episodes is you can do family game nights, and there's often a lot of laughter there. Sometimes a lot of arguing, but also laughter. Or movie marathons where you watch funny comedies. Like my family and I, we watch Studio C a lot, and they have so many lines memorized, and they're constantly quoting Studio C and laughing together. And I'm not very good with quotes and lines. I'm not very good at memorizing those lines, so I'm not one to do that with them, but my husband is constantly doing that with them. They love it. 
So you can encourage that playful banter and that lighthearted teasing, but always ensure that it's done with love and respect. We're going to talk about how this can go wrong. Prepare yourself. But before I do that, I want to just briefly talk about how pranks can backfire. While humor can be very powerful for bonding, you need to approach it with some sensitivity and awareness of others' feelings. I like to think that I'm pretty aware of feelings, but even I am sometimes surprised that people respond in the way that they do because of their own life experience or because of what's going on that day. Like my daughter has been more overwhelmed and things are not as funny to her right now, but then they will be the next day. So it's kind of hard to know for sure. But that doesn't mean stop it completely. That just means own your part, apologize, ask how they would like you to shift things where you can still do the things that you value and you love without completely throwing it out the window. Like it's just simple conversations like that. And I try not to have those conversations in the moment, but a day or two later when she might not be as emotional or overwhelmed or whatever it might be. So just consider the potential impact that it might have and if it aligns with everyone else's humor. Avoid jokes that can be hurtful or offensive or triggering. And remember that healthy humor brings joy and laughter without causing that harm or distress. That actually reminds me of one of my really good friends in college talked to one of our other close friends about pure humor. And I had never really thought about that before, but he was using humor like too much in these talks that he was giving and things like where it's drawing so much attention to him and it was making it less reverent and it just wasn't really that appropriate. And she talked to him about what pure humor can look like and how it does not draw attention to ourselves as much, but it is something to bond and unite and has pure intentions, essentially. And I loved that. I never thought about that before. So this is kind of the same thing. Another thing that it made me think about is some of my cousins actually told me that they think all pranks are mean because for them, it's drawing unwanted attention to themselves and they are quite introverted. So just keep that in mind. When I hear those things or understand those things, I try to be very respectful and not do those things. So I had actually, (laughs) while I was visiting my aunt, I had done some chocolate covered dog food or something to... (laughs) Don't judge. But I did not give it to them. Don't worry. I just put them out and kind of like sort of warned my kids so they knew, but they thought it was really funny. And I don't think anyone actually ate it, but they liked the idea that somebody might. Anyway, so just be careful. Let's talk about some examples of what not to do. Prepare yourselves, my friends, because these are not that great and you might get really grossed out. Some of these were done to me by my naughty oldest sister, and I'm going to share this episode with her, and I hope she shares it with her friends so everybody knows how devious this woman is, because these are only a very small portion of the naughty, naughty things she has done. Number one, she fed me brownies, and I should know not to eat things from her. You will soon see why. But I was like, oh, that's so sweet. So I took this bite of this brownie. And as I was pulling it from my mouth, it, there was these long strands coming from it. And I was just horrified. And I said, that better be caramel. And it was not caramel. It was not hard, long, stringy, crunchy caramel. It was actually all the hair from all of her relatives that she had recently been cutting and trimming their hair. She put it in brownies and fed it to me that my sweet, sweet sister. Now that is not even close to the worst one. She also, when I was probably eight or nine months pregnant for my going away party halfway across the country, she fed me a plate of nachos, completely loaded nachos. And I, of course, ate this delicious plate of nachos. And then she comes running out and she said, did you eat it all? And I said, what do you mean? Did I eat it all? Yes, I ate it all. And I knew I had this gut-wrenching feeling that something was horribly wrong. Well, her husband had gone hunting earlier that week, and he had a blister the size of his heel come off. And instead of throwing that away, she saved that giant dry heel skin and put it in my nachos, and I ate it. I remember at one point thinking that... 
Wow, that was a really chewy, stale chip. Like, really hard to eat. I am sorry for you listeners that are massively grossed out. I will try to tone it down from here on out. But yes, that one was pretty terrible. I was not happy about that one, especially because I was pregnant and leaving and going halfway across the country. That is not a way to send off a loved one. So I won't let her live that down. She just laughs. I don't think she feels remorse at all, ever. But I love her anyway, even though I'm terrified of her secretly. Okay, another one that she did, probably the worst one, actually, even though it's not as gross, probably, as eating the heel, is she had a snake, and she put the snake's skin that it shed in my sandwich, and I didn't know that, and I ate it, and I actually got salmonella poisoning from this. I didn't know what it was until we did some research, but I will spare you the details of what that looked like for me, Salmonella. All I can say is going into public was not possible because of how um, messy things got for me for a while. So that was not great. (laughs) So those are ones I would not recommend because you will have many enemies. And every time I tell those stories, I am the damsel in distress and everybody loves me. And my sister is the naughty, naughty one, which is actually true. Except for once you see all the things that I've done. But not that bad. I do not feed people terrible things. I was going to say I don't feed them terrible things. But once you see the... (laughs) Once you see the posts that I am posting all throughout the day, you might not agree with that completely. But it's not as bad as what she did, I must say. Some other things that I would maybe say don't do that I've learned from is I made a cake that said, find the toenails, and I actually did put the toenails in the cake, and I thought that was sufficient because I warned them. But when someone ate the cake, he didn't think I was serious, and he ended up getting all the toenails, and he was pretty upset with me. So maybe don't do that one. Another one, funny, but also a little terrifying. I made our Alexa do horror sounds, at 3 a.m. in the morning, which was really funny when I set the sounds, but not so funny at 3 a.m. Another one that my daughter did not like is I put this really nasty potion. I just found the most random things I could find in the fridge, and I mixed them all up, and it was spicy and gross and disgusting. And you put it in this little tiny cup, and then you put a straw in it, and then you put that cup, that smaller cup with the potion, inside a bigger cup and you fill it with ice and soda. So it looks like you're drinking ice and soda, but really it's this little tiny cup of yucky potion. And since I never really drink soda, the kids all want to drink (laughs) my drink and instead they get the yucky potion. Well, she did not find that very funny. (laughs) Another one that I actually learned from my naughty, naughty sister is a shock mat. She had this shock mat to keep her pets off of the counters. And she gave me the idea to put it on beds. So I put it on everyone's bed. I even did this in college and I did it (laughs) to my friend. I think she was praying at night. And my husband was also praying later on when I did it. And they just kept shocking their arms over and over. But it was like their brains (laughs) couldn't process what was happening. So, so funny to me. But my kids don't like that one, strangely enough. So maybe don't do a shock mat to your loved ones. This other one was also by my naughty, naughty sister. She did a shock collar on her husband's neck. And the moment you yelp, oh, and she turned it up all the way. It just keeps, (laughs) I shouldn't laugh. This is terrible. It just keeps going off more, like shocking you more and more the more you yelp. But the more it shocks you, the more you yelp. So it's like this never-ending thing. And he was not happy. And that is actually quite mean. So don't do that. I laugh, but it's actually really sad, too. Another one, this one was by me, is... (laughs) This is actually... I forgot to mention. I'm so excited. One of the giveaways is whoever posts the most pictures or a screenshot of reviews that they do on any of the podcast channels, especially Apple Podcasts, or any shares that they send, just screenshot that you sent it to a friend or you post it on social media, anything like that, or you post any of your own 
pranks that you do that day. I just want all of those things screenshotted or posted on any of our social media channels. Just pick one for you to post and my team will count all those up and whoever posts the most will win (laughs) a mannequin. Now, that might not sound very exciting to you, but my friends, this is like a $100 mannequin. He's six feet tall and... (laughs) I purchased one, and I will show you in those posts. They are coming. Keep your eyes out for all of them. They are so, so funny. My friends, I have had so much fun with him. I even named him Gorky. You might wonder why I named him Gorky. Well, apparently this means fear in Turkmen. I didn't even know Turkmen was a language, but it's kind of like dorky, but with a G. Gorky. (laughs) I was going to name him Loki the god of mischief, but my kids wanted me to keep Gorky. So anyway, his name is Gorky. (laughs) And I started out by putting him in the kid's shower. And (laughs) most of them thought it was really funny. My daughter, not so much. My exchange student was actually about to get into the shower. So that was kind of shocking for her. But she thought it was really funny. (laughs) So luckily, I didn't get too in trouble for that. But you may not want to do that. You might have some family members that might hate you for that because he's very realistic looking and uh, (laughs) you can do other things. Like he has been rotated everywhere. I took him to, this is actually really fantastic. I took him to one of my very best friend's house and she's currently living alone because her husband is out of state right now and her kids have moved out. And I didn't want to terrify her, but she forgot that she gave me her garage code. And so I held on to that for like a month. And I just put him just like peeking out of the bathroom door, just propped open a little bit. So he was just like looking down through like a baseball cap and looked super creepy. And I was so excited because she came late at night. So it was also like dim and dark as far as I know, I don't, I don't think the lights were on, but I'm not sure because it's before you really come in the main part of the house. And what ended up happening instead is that her husband was visiting from Oregon at the time and <laughs> it scared him instead. And I just wish I could have been there. It sounded so fun. Anyway, they might secretly hate me though. So you have to be careful. I don't think my friend does, but I, I, I'm not sure if I'm on her husband's hit list or not. But the possibilities for Gorky, the mannequin, are are endless. So if you want Gorky delivered straight to your home, you have one week to post everything you can. I'm giving you one week because these amazing inspirational things that I'm giving you are going to be releasing all day, and you do not just have to reserve it for April Fool's. Be like me, where I do these things all throughout the month because otherwise it's just so predictable. So again, if you are the one that posts the most things, which really won't be too hard because all of our social media channels are relatively new, so the audience is still growing. So I promise you, if you just decide you're going to do it, your chance is high of actually getting this amazing mannequin right now anyway. If you wait too long, that's not the case. But remember, you can post screenshots of reviews, screenshots of shares, your own pranks, or any other way you are spreading the word and sharing this joy for all to experience. (laughs) All right. I was talking, though, about things not to do. Over time, Gorky has started to terrify my daughter a little too much. So he is currently in my closet because she's so mad at him. And every single day, he actually ends up scaring me when I walk back in my closet. So you know, just be careful of your audience. (laughs) Oh, and I will say, I also put him (laughs) outside of my other best friend's house. And I think she said something about how I'm the devil. And she (laughs) she was dying because she came home early for a meeting before I could plant it in her house. And I had some help from her son. So instead, I just put it right outside her garage door right when she's coming around the corner. And uh, she was quite surprised because I actually even put a ski mask on him. So yeah, it was a little terrifying. Maybe don't do that level of terrifying, but maybe you can. It's just really up to you. 
You just have to read your audience. Oh, another quick one. I've had several backfire on me. Like, they end up being pranks to myself. And one time, I thought it'd be so funny to completely cover the entryway in corn syrup so that when the kids came home from school, they would have to walk across it and kind of get stuck. Well, that backfired because then I had to take care of it. And when they walked across it, then they carried it all throughout the house, especially the downstairs. And it did not take once or twice or three times or four times, not even 10 times of mopping, but like 20 times. That stuff is so thick that no matter what I did, I could not get it off where it didn't make that sound, which is the worst sound in the world. So don't try that one. Anyway, I've given you several examples of what not to do. Let's talk about the other side. Let's talk about unifying families through laughter really briefly. Healthy humor and laughter have this remarkable ability to unify families, and it creates these shared moments of joy and connection. When we laugh together, we form bonds that strengthen our relationships, and they carry us through both these joyful and these challenging times. John Cleese said, I'm struck by how laughter connects you with people. It's almost impossible to maintain any kind of distance or any sense of social hierarchy when you're just howling with laughter. (laughs) That is so true. There's no boss. There's no employee. There's no parent. There's no child. It's just this connected joy, this pure joy. I just love that level of laughter. When we build this in our own homes more often, and it is a practice, you can find greater resilience and strength and joy in each other's company at home. It really does soften hearts and it changes the atmosphere. My husband and I often use it as a tool to get our kids to move from those grudges and that stubbornness into a more productive frame of mind. Now, we're careful that we don't shift it into this toxic positivity by minimizing their feelings. But if they're getting kind of stuck, you can tell they're unable to move on more because of pride or something like that. We found that if we can get them to laugh or smile a little bit, then they can move on. And then everyone moves on in those healthier ways. I really did think my kids would hate me after they got mad at some of these pranks, but they really do beg for it now. And I am quite convinced that Despite all of the ways I am trying to improve in my life and be a leader and try to be this strong spiritual giant and this wise, healthy person, I'm pretty sure one of the most lasting legacies that I will leave will actually be my pranks and my childhood glee that comes out when I'm pranking people. I mentioned in my past episode when I talked about humor that I often We'll just sit there at night and just like (laughs) bust out laughing for no reason. And my husband will just turn to me and he'll say, you're thinking about a prank, aren't you? (laughs) Seriously, nothing brings me more joy than contemplating these things and thinking how I'm going to carry it out and especially thinking about how they're going to react. So much pure joy. I don't know why I'm like this, but... It is what it is, right? All right, now I'm going to share just a few quick ideas on what to do. Some of these are in those pictures that I'm posting on social media, but there are so many more. These are just a few ideas. And they're pretty harmless for the most part because I'm dealing with younger kids. If I had older kids, this I could be more devious and get away with it, but not with my younger kids. So I've put mayonnaise or mustard in donuts. I've put mustard in Oreos. I've sewn heart butt patches on their clothes or I've sewn the legs shut. I've, <laughs> I have uh, bought Sour Patch Kids and slit the bottom of the package open with this razor. And then I will take the candies out. I'll rinse them off so there's no sweet, sour stuff on it. And, and then I'll roll it in salt, and then I'll put it back in the package. I actually did that with a chocolate Easter bunny too, and I filled it with mustard for my daughter. (laughs) Anyway, those things they thought were hilarious for the most part. Depends on who you ask. Or, you know, tape the nozzle on the sink, although that ends up getting me more than anyone else. 
I've also put sardines in cupcakes, which they thought was funny because nobody will eat anything that I make on April Fool's. I put vinegar in water bottles. I've made a soap popsicle from like a soap bar. Then you cover it in magic shell. I've done caramel onions. I do this flower plate prank. (laughs) You'll have to see the picture because I can't really explain it adequately. Just know that it ends up with flour in the face. And then (laughs) one that I came up with all by myself, actually several of these I have. I was looking at the shampoo bottle one day and I was like, why is it called shampoo? That's such a weird word. And so then I was like, I should change the label where it says something like dog poo. So I totally did. I changed the label. I designed it and I printed it out. So it says dog poo. And then (laughs) I changed just some of the wording. So it's really funny, which I'll show a picture again on social media. And then I made, I made this concoction of really gross stuff that comes out that resembles poo. (laughs) Sorry for the bathroom humor, but I had to. I mean, with a word like shampoo, you have to do something like that. Anyway, these are some pranks that are pretty harmless, just a few ideas. But like I said, I have 55 plus. I'm hoping I can stop at 55, but it's really hard for me to minimize my pranks. So we'll see what number I get to by the end. But at least 55 pranks. Check those out in the show notes. And please, please, please share it with everyone you know. Bring joy to the world today and tomorrow and the next day. Share this with everyone you know, because my friends, you know it's going to bring joy and laughter. Even if they don't do it to other people, you know it's going to bring laughter, and you know it's going to make them smile, and that's what we want, right? Just remember that as we celebrate April Fool's Day and our 100th episode, this gift of laughter brings a profound impact on us and our lives. Whether that's through jokes or pranks or playful banter, Humor has the power to uplift our spirits, strengthen our bonds, and bring joy into our homes. And let's be honest, my friends, we all need more joy. Yes, we do. With all that complaining that happens, we need more joy. (laughs) By incorporating more fun and laughter into our family lives, we can create a nurturing environment where love, laughter, and that togetherness thrive, as long as it's that pure humor, remember. So embrace that laughter, share these smiles today, and celebrate the joy of being together with those we love. Remember, with each playful prank on April Fool's Day, families create stories that become cherished treasures, lighting up the darkest of days with shared laughter and love. Happy April Fool's Day, my friends, and happy 100th episode. Thank you again for all of your support. And check those things out in the show notes. Until next time. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, chances are someone else would too. Would you take 30 seconds to share this with a friend who's looking for greater family fulfillment? And while you're sharing, tell me what you think about the show by leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. It refuels me when I hear this podcast is helping you. No matter what your house or your hair looks like, I'll meet you back here every Monday and Thursday morning for more episodes. Until then!